Hi, I'm Laura Flanders on day two of AFL-CIO Convention 2013 in Los Angeles. Well, we have just come, just now, from a really exciting press conference by people who, well, they won an enormous award, one of the AFL's biggest this year, the George Meany Award. They're the domestic workers who are moving from strength to strength, not just in this country, state by state, but around the globe. And they're one of the so-called alt-labor type of groups that the AFL is pledging at this convention to work more closely with and to learn things from. We haven't reached the end of the road yet. And like we said when we came here, we're not going back to our countries without a convention. Domestic workers first came together at an international conference in 2006. Today we have 33 domestic workers organizations as affiliates. My name is Esther Stevens and I'm a full-time domestic worker. Domestic workers, convention. Domestic workers. It took years of organizing to get to this moment. The movement of the people is a tremendous movement. That's where the real power resides. We know that capitalism is going to make use of the informal sector and therefore it's important for informal sector to organize to fight the onslaught of capital. Yes, it is. My mother was a kitchen girl, my father was a garden boy, that's why I'm a unionist, I'm a unionist, I'm a unionist. That's why I'm a unionist, that's why I'm a unionist, that's why I'm a unionist, I'm a unionist, I'm a unionist. My mother was a kitchen girl, my father was a garden boy. Now, the annual George Meany Lane Kirkland Human Rights Award recognized the efforts of workers' rights advocates in some of the most testing and difficult environments around the world. It recognizes efforts to promote and defend workers' rights and to put workers' rights squarely in the middle of discussions around human rights, inclusive economics, and democracy. Domestic workers for too long have been ignored or even forgotten. They make extraordinary sacrifices to support not only the families of their employers, but their own families. They work in private homes, away from the public eye, from typical workplaces, and too often away from the law. And here in the United States, Domestic workers do not enjoy basic protections under our labor laws. And the AFL-CIO is proud to have a partnership with the National Domestic Workers Alliance so that together, together, we can fight to defend and expand domestic workers' rights. Here to talk about the National Domestic Workers Alliance, about the California bill, AB 241, and about their lives, are Ai-jen Pu, Executive Director of the Alliance. Ai-jen, welcome. And Lourdes Balago Pablo, who is a domestic worker who works with the Filipino Workers Center yes. here in LA. Let's start with Sunday night's award, Ai-jen. You were there, Lourdes. Yeah, I was there. So exciting. You all marched onto the stage, yes. received an award from President Trumpka. Mm -hmm. What did it mean to you, iGen, and to your organization? And what did it recognize? It really felt like the coming together of years of relationship building and working together and finally feeling like we're being welcomed into the labor movement. This is the first time there's ever been a delegation of domestic workers to the AFL convention, so that in and of itself is historic. And our partnership with the AFL-CIO has been historic on a number of fronts, and 
really the convention, the, A the ILO Convention on Domestic Work was one of the first ways in which we started working together. In 2011, the international body that establishes global standards for workers passed its very first convention on domestic work, covering the 100 million domestic workers who are working around the world. And we partnered with the AFL-CIO to be a part of that process of designing and, and uh, passing the convention. And we were the first labor federation in the world to have an actual domestic worker on the official negotiations and delegation to the ILO for this convention. And we ended up being a model for other labor movements around the world on that. So in some ways it was the coming together and really symbolic of what's possible when there's a really strong relationship between workers who've been invisible um, in the 21st century labor movement. Well, let's make you a little less invisible. Lourdes, tell me a little bit about your work. Uh, we are the ones giving their medications. So that is the first and foremost. We are responsible to prepare their meals, to feed them, especially if they are disabled or incapable of doing that. But uh, for patients who are still capable of uh, helping themselves, then we just assist them. As for now, I work for 24 hours, but before I work for 12 hours, that is uh, leave out. For a leave in a job, that means you stay in the house of the patient for 24 hours. If it is uh, full time, you can work there for four to five days. And for a uh, reliever, as uh, we say, that is from two days to three days a week. Do you get to sleep? Do you get to rest? Uh, yeah, but it depends on the uh, case of the patient. There are patients which are uh, difficult to handle, especially those uh, that are of G-tube because you have to reposition the patient every two hours. So you cannot sleep continuously, and that is really very difficult. Do you yeah. have your own children, and where are they? I have a son, a 15-year-old son. He's in the Philippines. Looking to the future, Lourdes, what do you want for your son and his family? What would you like him to enjoy that perhaps you don't yet enjoy? <laughs> well, first, I really want my son um, to come here. When we were talking, he said, Mama, please come home. I need you here. But I said, son, if I will go home, what will be my job? What kind of life shall we have? Because I am already retired from the university where I taught. I taught at the Nueva Vizcaya State University in Nueva Vizcaya, my hometown. But you came here still yeah, to find um, work. When I was there, um, they recruited us to teach here. So I was really very happy. So I had my early retirement. So I was expecting that I will be teaching math or physics, but unlikely I was given um, life science to teach and earth science to teach. So it was really very difficult on my part because I was in high school when I had biology. So you were recruited to teach in the U.S. But once yeah. you got here, you were assigned to a field that was not your field. Exactly. When you were unable to thrive in that field, you found yourself in need of work? When I left the Philippines, we had a loan of $10,000 to pay the agency and um, the one who recruited us here. As I said, because I was not alone, there were three of us who came here at the same time. How common are these kinds of stories, Ajahn? I think they're very common. Um, if you talk to the people at the National Guest Workers Alliance, they have dozens of stories of workers who were recruited to the United States, sometimes as students on cultural exchange, sometimes to work, and then find themselves in a situation that they could not have imagined, and uh, nightmare situations where they're trapped in labor camps or doing work that, you know, packing boxes on a Hershey factory floor and for $3 an hour. And so it, it's unfortunately more common than we would think. And to just clarify, they come on an HB... They come legally. visa, yes. legally, 
and then find themselves in this situation with debts to pay and no way to work exactly in where they thought they were going to work right and oftentimes working in jobs that used to be union jobs that were good jobs living wage jobs that people could take pride in now downgraded several levels to guest worker positions for workers who had no idea that they would be doing that work so what difference would this bill AB 241 make to somebody like Lourdes, and Lourdes, I'd love to hear from you too, but maybe I, Jen, want to begin? It would mean actually winning minimum wage and overtime protections for caregivers, which is game-changing in terms of a step towards real economic opportunity and stability for this workforce. And we're really talking about, in California, an estimated 200,000 domestic workers. Many of them are caregivers who are excluded. So this would mean an actual floor for those workers where there currently is not. There are millions of people building this economy, building every sector of industry, who are being separated from their families, who are suffering in silence, who are working in the shadows, and it's really time that this, this immigration reform bill pass. Looking after our family, looking after our families our separated families, from their families. Exactly, exactly. What difference does the AFL-CIO make to you in this work? I mean, it's very nice, all this talk of closer relationships, closer affiliation. Um, what does it mean to you to be here and to have the AFL-CIO in support? I know that since uh, AF, uh, AFL-CIO is a huge organization and that is worldwide, I know that um, that organization can help the uh, organizations that are uh, still starting or at the lower, uh, how do you term that? A little weaker. Yes. <laughs> so they make us strong. What form does that support? need to take to make your work truly different, um, Igen. There is a resolution. How far does that take us that was passed on the first day of the convention? What do you need that to bring in terms of real life change? We want to be organizing side by side with union members in local communities at the state level. We want to be pushing for elected officials who are really going to stand for workers' rights and low-wage workers in particular. We want to be working with CLCs and state labor federations to move central labor, councils. central labor councils and state labor federations to move agendas that are inclusive of all working people, women workers, low-wage workers, invisible workers. And I think that if we can build that kind of an agenda for 21st century labor movement, with all of the diversity of who workers are today, domestic workers, day laborers, as well as communications workers and government workers, that is the, it, that, those seem like the right ingredients for a truly powerful labor movement that can really transform this economy. And being here means that we're all working towards building that in a common frame.